guys, it's Jen with JCT Rustic Homestead. I realize this isn't the best light, but um, I wanted to chair, not in the wind. So, um, I wanted to talk to you about something. I didn't realize this, so I thought it would bring it to your attention and then discuss uh, some of it. I, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I'm going to read something from a place called the KimFoundation.org. Uh, I don't know anything about them, but this was one of the first things that popped up when I searched May Mental Health Awareness Month. Each year, millions of Americans face the reality of living with a mental illness. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and every year the goal is to fight stigma, provide support, educate the public, and advocate for policies that support people with mental illness and their families. Mental Health Awareness Month was started in the United States in 1949 by the Mental Health America organization, then known as the National Association for Mental Health. Its purpose is to raise awareness and educate the public about mental illnesses, such as the 18.1% of Americans who suffer from depression, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder, the realities of living with these conditions, and strategies for attaining mental health and wellness. It also aims to draw attention to suicide, which can be precipitated by some mental illness. I'm not going to read a whole lot of the page because there is a lot more information, but that was from the KimFoundation.org. Um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and there's Agriculture Month, or um, week or day or by local day, small business Saturday, Black Friday, all that stuff. But I felt the need um, to talk about this because I am fully transparent about the fact that I have been on medication for depression and anxiety for probably about five years now. I honestly can't tell you when I started. But um, on the outside, people didn't realize it. They knew something was off, but not really what. Um, I might not have been my happy-go-lucky self. Um, just so you know, I never contemplated suicide before going on medication. I will say I thought about it in high school, and I probably had some severe bouts of anxiety in high school, and it was just not as well known as it is now. But I wanted to talk about it a little bit because I feel like People are scared to talk about it. They don't want to admit that they have a problem, that they're on medication for something. Some people are very anti-medication, and that's your right to believe it. But I do know that biologically, chemically, medication helps balance things in your body and in your brain. It's kind of like hormones. But the fact that you couldn't see me was really bugging me, and I'm not sure you could see me any better now. But, um... I do know that the medication can help you, however, if you're not okay with being medicated, um, it does, diet and exercise are two big things to help you. Exercise, as um, Reese, Wither, Reese Witherspoon says in Legally Brawn, exercise produces endorphins. Endorphins make people happy. Happy people don't kill their husbands. You know, I don't mean, I kind of mean that as a joke, but Exercise does create good feeling emotions. Laughter creates good feeling emotions. And diet. Um, dieting is very hard for me in case you hadn't noticed. But I do know that when I get off the fast food, when I get off the sugar and the soda and the junk food, um, I do feel better, which is really dumb because why would I go back to the junk food? I say it feeds my soul. <laughs> But diet and exercise are two things that you can try if you are not um, for the medication. How did I know that there was a problem? Um, I didn't. I knew that there was something going on with me. I knew I wasn't thinking clearly, that I wasn't as sharp on things. Um, one of the big things that really messed with me, and it still does once in a while, is I lost my ability to form coherent sentences and I lost vocabulary. Like, I, I couldn't come up with the word that I needed, kind of like now but different. You know, it was always at the tip of my tongue. I knew there was something, I knew there was a word that would better describe what I was thinking and I knew I had a wider vocabulary than what I was using. 
but for some reason it just it it couldn't come to me and that was I found out after I started medication a result of anxiety because the anxiety just inhibits you you can't explain it you can't always prepare for it if you're someone who has a relative that's suffering from depression and or anxiety and you want to help them the biggest thing is to just understand that there is no answer you cannot explain why they have an anxiety or a panic attack you cannot always explain why they want to be in a deep dark hole and not come out there were times when I wanted to laugh, but I didn't feel worthy of laughing. I didn't feel worthy of being happy. And um, though these two things go hand in hand. Um, some of it's more a depression spectrum, some of it's more an anxiety per spectrum. But um, I have yet to find a fellow person that doesn't identify with that. You can't explain it and you can't always prepare for it. And sometimes it takes a second to come out of it. Sometimes it can take days, depending on the severity of your depression or anxiety. Um, I understand those with bipolar issues have a much uh, bigger roller coaster that they have to navigate. And it's very hard for them to get out of at least the lows. I'm thankful I'm not quite one of those people, but um, I am still on medication. And as long as it's keeping me stable and I'm not having any issues, I'm going to continue being on medication. It's not something I'm ashamed of or I'm afraid of. I think more people need to talk about it. You know, if I tell someone, yep, I'm on depression and anxiety medication, some of them are just surprised beyond belief and others are finally like maybe that's what's wrong with me and that's why i feel the need to talk about it you know i do want this channel to be farmer focused but lately these last few months with the the virus and um social issues going on there were some times where the news and the world events were really causing me great anxiety and it wasn't because I was scared of getting sick and it wasn't because I was scared of a family member getting sick it was just because it was a never-ending conversation about this thing and there were a lot of unknowns but again I wasn't scared about the virus itself I was I was having anxiety because of the fear that media and peers and nothing against them, but the constant circular conversations. You couldn't talk about anything else. You couldn't. I don't do well with unknowns. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure if I'm going back to work June 1st. You know, I thought I'd be going back to work the middle of April and now it's May 11th or 12th. It's May 12th. And I'm supposed to um, go back to the office the beginning of June, but we don't know if that's going to happen, and that's difficult for me. But um, all of the talk and the news and the criticism and the he said, she said really started bothering me a lot. And the more consumed I was by it, the more it started affecting me personally, personally. and um, it wasn't healthy. And um, it's not anybody's fault. It is what it is. Um, I have to figure out how to cope with it. Either I have to excuse myself from the situation. In this case, um, I was called off work because we were a non-essential business. I don't watch the news. I very rarely check the news. I used to check it at least daily to find out the number of cases and stuff. But then after a while, I decided that wasn't healthy for me either. And um, maybe that makes me an ostrich burying its head in the sand, but I know for me, mentally, my mental health is benefiting by me not listening to the news, by not worrying about the politics, even though it doesn't always affect me. And I could go on and on and on, I'm sure, but I don't know how much 
people really want to know. So the anxiety of everyday living can sometimes get to me. Um, unknowing things, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing a situation comes up. Um, it's really funny because I married someone who is very last minute, who is never on time. <laughs> and no offense, Colton, I, um, but in, in many ways he has really helped me chill <laughs> and not have that kind of anxiety anymore. But, um, so the anxiety and depression, they kind of go hand in hand, but I just, the only thing I can say is if you are someone from, that is in a hole and you don't know why, or you just, you, you're agitated all the time and you don't know why, if something trips your trigger and you can't, you can't figure out why, you know, there's something that's bothering you and, and you just don't know why, you can't verbalize it and you get up and my, my, my triggers was just general agitation and frustration and having my hands tied and I go up and I get them out and do. To be honest, I suddenly realized that that was part of my coping thing, was going up and getting a Mountain Dew. Um, because even though the caffeine is an agitator, it just, like, it, it was something to distract me or something. But if you're one of those people that, that are like that, or you're in a hole, or you don't feel like you want to laugh, or those funny movies that you used to love you don't want to watch, or, you know, you don't enjoy being around crowds, um, consider talking to someone. It's not anything to be ashamed about. Even if you do or don't get medication, I, I am a proponent of medication because I've seen it balance more people than not. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, but um, consider talking to someone, especially if you have suicidal thoughts or if you have thoughts of hurting yourself. That is not okay. Hurting yourself does not solve the problem. Suicide does not solve the problem talking to somebody beneficial, not necessarily someone who's going to encourage you down that dark hole. Um, talking to a doctor, finding the right doctor, finding a relative who maybe has the same issues, because it kind of, I believe, is genetic. Um, talking to friends, even if you don't want to talk to them, just find that close friend or maybe that obscure friend that you don't know why you think of when you see this, just reach out to them and say, hey, I don't know what's going on with me. Something just feels off. And maybe talking it through will help you identify what's going on. Um, so I just encourage you to talk to someone, do some research. I was considered, I pretty much was considered a functioning depressive anxiety person. I was a high level functioning because I didn't want anybody to know something was wrong. So then I went on medication and I went on a medication that I knew worked for somebody else I knew and we were very similar people. Um, and I, I, I have another person that had a very not good time with the medication. So understand that your body chemistry is going to be different than somebody else's. So when I said um, I'd get to the medication in a little bit, some medication may work for you, some medication may work for me, and it may not be the same thing. There's different receptors in your body, there's different ways the chemicals work within the medication, even if it starts, even if it starts making your symptoms worth worse, there's that vocabulary again. Even if it starts making your symptoms worse, immediately call your doctor. Say, this is not working. Please help me find something else. It also may not work right away. I think it took close to two weeks before my medication really started. Um, I could feel some effects of it. But um, just know that your doctor may not prescribe you your ideal medication. It may take a little bit of trial and error, but please hang in there. And I promise you, it will it will help if you can stick with it. If you can just take those one or two pills, whatever whatever you're prescribed, just stick with it. Just do one day at a time. Just say, if I'll get through this day. I'll take my medication, and tomorrow is a different day, and and go from there. Another thing that uh, I've had a 
interesting time with is that I can forget to take my medication one or two days, but once I get to three or four days, I start having some interesting reactions, and there is a medication withdrawal. I don't know if it's for every kind of medication or just the one I'm... I'm on, but I think it happens with several different ones. And because you're messing with your body chemistry, your body has to figure out how to rebalance itself. It's kind of like when you eat a ton of sugar or caffeine and you suddenly stop having that sugar or caffeine, your body goes into a withdrawal. It doesn't know what to do. You might start having headaches or sticks to your stomach or you really lethargic. Um, so you just, there's a, there's a protocol that you're supposed to follow. Talk to your doctor if you're considering going off your medication, but uh, one time we had a snafu with my prescription and I knew I was going to be fine for a couple days and the prescription was coming and I wasn't worried. But after like three, four, five days, um, I was doing something. I was telling myself, don't go, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And I did it. And I did it three times. And so I called my mom because I was at work and I called my mom. I said, hey, can you pick up my medication? I really need to take it. And within, by the next day, I was fine. But it, it was just really interesting to have that feeling, almost like you weren't in control anymore. Um, like I could function, you know, I could, I could mostly speak. I started having a little bit of vocabulary, sentence structure issues. But um, I, I'm not, I can't quit cold turkey, and I know that. Um, I think it will mess with my body too much. And... There is uh, a day where I hope I don't have to be on medication. Um, I don't like having... One of the reasons why I didn't want to be on medication was because I didn't want to be hobbled by that bottle, you know, by that pill. I didn't want to have to remember it, you know. I traveled a lot at the time, and I didn't want to have to remember to pack my pills every time. You know, I was house-sitting, I was going to rides, I was visiting friends, I was, I was traveling across the country... And I didn't want to have to worry about running out of medication to find a, 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 a pharmacy. And I didn't want to have to worry about remembering to throw the pill in my bag. Or not finding the, the, the bottle in my bag. But I know, and I didn't want to have to remember to take the medication every day. But once I started taking it, once I started getting stable, it's just second nature. It's part of my routine. I know that if I forget it over a weekend, I will be okay and I can pick up Monday. That's not always the case for everybody, but um, I know for me that there is comfort in knowing that, that even if I forget a day, I will be okay. And that's part of the anxiety and depression is knowing that you will be okay. Knowing that even if you miss that pill, you will be fine. Uh, there is there is help. So um, I'm going to probably wrap it up. If you are someone who is going through something like this, feel free to talk. Um, I'm not always the best therapist. I'm certainly not certified, but I'm always willing to talk. You know, I've seen, I've seen some, some transformations in people, not just animals. I've seen a lot of transformation in animals, but people as well. And, um, if, if you need me to be that person that says, go to the doctor, get medicated, I will do it. Because sometimes you need that harsh shove for you to get there. And that's, that's what I needed. I needed that person to tell me, you need medication. It is a chemical imbalance. It is scientifically proven. Go get medication. I needed that from someone. But, um, and I'm better for it. There are still good days and bad days, but they're mostly good. And I'm learning now to cope better with how it affects me, which is huge. And you're not going to get there until you get stable or at least partially stable. Therapy is generally highly encouraged along with medication. Um, I'm a bit of a, well, I'm a pessimist. But I'm kind of one of those people that feel like I know my brain and I know my body and I'm a rational thinker. I think from outside the box and I think from multiple viewpoints. So um, should I go to a therapist? Probably. There's probably more going on than I want to admit. 
some personal things that I'm not going to go into. But um, just know that when you get medication, your doctor may suggest or even require you to see some sort of therapist, psychologist, something in a mental health field to talk about things, to, to find your triggers, to make you more aware of what is causing your bouts of anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, suicide, any of that. Um, so I said I was going to wrap it up and I didn't, but I want people to feel comfortable talking about it. I want people to not be scared to talk about it. I, I'm, it's like mental health didn't exist before, at least it exists in my world until maybe 10 years ago, even though I'd had, um, experience with it in different ways. But it seems like not until about maybe 10 years ago, there was this big push for mental health, mental awareness, treatments for anxiety and depression, and there was more people talking about it. But my hope is that people are not afraid to talk about it. They're not afraid to seek out help, uh, be it medication, a friend, something else. And parents, I know it's really hard to tell your children you need to go get medicated. But if you push them, they will resist. Unfortunately, I think parents are the last person that should that can help their children in this case. Um, I'm close with my parents, but had they noticed, had they said something, I'm not sure I would have gone through with it. Um, I went to the doctor because I thought I had Lyme's disease or a thyroid problem. I was so tired. I was tired all the time. I'd sleep all night and then I'd want to nap during the day. I had no motivation to do anything, not even the things I love to do. But if if they hadn't have been patient, I will say your your support structure is important. If, if I hadn't have had their support, I don't know what I would have done emotionally. And... Um, uh, like I said, unfortunately, parents, I think, maybe um, think think outside the box on that one. If you suspect your children are at risk, um, talk, to, talk to someone about the best way to go through with suggesting they seek help. Unfortunately, I, th I think um, parental involvement in this aspect doesn't always help. And I, I'm sorry to say that, but just keep that in mind. If you're a parent or guardian or something like that, try to figure out uh, an interesting way to approach the subject or to have somebody else approach the subject. Anyway, I didn't mean this to be a downer of a video, but it's something that I am connected to. I didn't realize May was Mental Health Awareness Month, but I wanted you guys to be aware of my mental health and history and even during um, all the stress and anxiety of the last eight weeks or however long it's been, I will say being on the farm, being somewhat secluded from especially the news. And, um, I do go through social media, but it's, it's different than what it was before we were staying in place. But having the goal of this plant sale of making sure I get certain things in the garden at specific dates has helped me so much. So um, I hope you are able to find something that gives you purpose and gives you a reason to get up on the in the day and do something and that will also help you with your mental health even if you are not um, clinically depressed or stressed out to the max. Having that thing to do will, will help you emotionally and physically as well. So guys, um, thank you for joining me on somewhat of a <laughs> touchy subject, but I hope you're all doing well. I hope mentally you're doing well through this time. And uh, again, if you are somebody or know of somebody that just needs to talk a little bit about this, feel free to be in touch. My contact information is below or on our website or Facebook page. Um, like I said, I'm not the best expert, but I'll do what I can. Anyway, I will sign off at this point. Please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It helps our channel grow. And I really hope the best for everybody that's watching this.